Hi, um, we're the team from Hickman, and um, I'll uh, actually get our presentation now. And I'll call you when it's about one minute left to go in your presentation. Okay. Should be this one. Yeah. Maybe this one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Looks good, guys. Yeah, let's see. First one. Um, how do you present? There. Okay, oh, there you go. Yeah. Much better. Um, there you go. Uh, I'm Brady, and my name's Alec. We're both seniors at uh, Hickman, and our project is Ogres, the Zero G Organic Research Station. And in these first few slides, we've got uh, overall pictures of our of our design that we can come back to um, at the end for questions. But um, this right here is our first prototype. Prototype A. Pictures of that. Next slide is uh, the one we have currently. Well, prototype B, and then the uh, CAD drawing for the casing of that prototype. But I think we can uh, get straight into systems here, starting with our camera system. We've got. A Pi camera that is uh, hooked up to the Pi Zero that we're given um, on the outside and outside of the uh, growth chamber, so that we get a um, get a view of the plant from one side, and uh, it's actually it's a positioned sideways because it's a safe space. But it'll be uh, um, the image would be like rotated in post, and um, uh, we we planned with the camera system. To uh, to have a mirror on the on the back side, but we didn't end up getting that implemented. Um, and on the on the right is a picture of from the Pi Zero itself into uh, uh, into the growth chamber that it's showing where the plant would be a uh, we call an ogre, just a little uh, little little post it. <coughs> and for our sensor, we we're using the um, environmental combo sensor that we were given. Um, and it's uh, attached to the quick system uh, uh, to the Raspberry Pi, and it's mounted on the inside of the growth chamber. And um, so it can uh, take an accurate uh, gas, me gas measurements, um, temperature measurements, humidity measurements. And um, uh, this... Uh, our, our uh, gas measurements actually are going to be very important because uh, our box, our growth chamber is sealable by solenoid valves, like sealable and unsealable. And um, when the box is fully sealed, the gas, the change in rate of the gas measurements uh, can determine the rate of photosynthesis, which is uh, going to be a useful measurement for experimenters. And down here we have a uh, video of the um, data, data collection. Again, yeah. And um, the, actually, the bottom two values that are coming from the CCS811 read zero right now, which is not accurate for CO2. Could be accurate for the uh, 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 volatile compounds, but um, that is mo we, we're not sure if that's due to the uh, burning in of the sensor or whether it's an issue with code. Um, and there's uh, there's the sensor shown for our. Um air delivery system. We originally were assuming we'd be able to pull straight out from the cabin, so we had a hole on the side of our box. But now that we know we can't do that, we've adjusted by building standoffs into the box that we can uh, mount our fan onto. We're using two solenoid valves and tubing that connects to the fan and to uh, another part to dehydrate it after it comes back out. So this is a video of us turning the solenoids on, they'll both open, and then the fan will turn on and start pushing air in, which will make it push air through the other solenoid out. And this is our uh, first prototype, which we used um, just the actual desiccant packet itself and not, uh, we'll show you in a second, the casing that we made for it. Uh, this is a picture of the second prototype. As you can see, it's got the standoffs here, and it no longer has the whole. Yeah. 
So um, with our, our prototype B, we um, the fan uh, pushes air through a funnel and then through tubing into the first solenoid valve, which is not seen because it's behind uh, behind the next part, and it's uh, it it pressurizes the chamber, and then air escapes through the other solenoid valve, which connects to this um, this cylinder that. Uh, is a dehydrator fitting. And we actually just we filled it with silicon pearls and covered it with uh, with with, um, with gauze to uh, allow for air transfer um, through it and to stop the pearls from flying out of it. And this uh, would make sure this whole system would make sure that air is circulated through the uh, through the growth chamber, but also uh, keeping all of the electronics uh, dry. And um, one benefit of this uh, of this system of transferring air is that it also increases uh, uh, the transfer of water through our and uh, transpiration. For the lighting system, uh, we're using LED strips that are controlled by an Arduino. Uh, they're on a plexiglass plate here attached to standoffs on the top of the box. Right now we have three red strips and two blue strips on there just for like a basic growth configuration, but you could put whatever kind of strips you wanted on that piece of glass and then just like take it in and out or replace it if you want to do a different kind of experiment. Originally we had the uh, lights inside just like stuck to the top of the box, but we decided to go ahead and use that room above for that. For the water delivery system, we were initially going with pumps, but it ended up just not really working out due to space. And also uh, we were worried about it using too much water for the plant. So we started doing a wicking system. We have this wicking material here that is uh, up in this IV bag, and then it'll go into this area here where we toggle the wicking. Um, the IV bag has nutrient solution in it right now. We have this part, which is a uh, perforated tubing that's hydrophilic, and we're we're debating on whether we want to use it in the box or not. We need to really do more testing to see how much water it's letting through so that we know if it's the best idea. For the growth medium, we're using perlite right now. Uh, it's because it's porous, it'll let air through and it'll also allow for capillary action for the water to diffuse. Um, we've got a piece of gauze on top to stop the perlite pellets from getting everywhere. And uh, yeah. So one, um, the, the reason we wanted to use a pump system first was because we really wanted this to be uh, the amount of water that gets the plants to be modifiable by the experimenter. But we, since we ended up not going for that, we needed a way to toggle the wicking system. So we used a servo motor to lift. This is the first test of it in our in our prototype eh? um, that lifts a piece of the wicking away from another and well, it should break the circuit, break the uh, just break the connection between the two. Just. Uh, like that. And here is our uh, our new casing for it. On the left, we have it uh, working in a similar fashion. Uh, although um, now it's uh, able to be um, uh, contained, so water doesn't leak out when it's a uh, <laughs> when it's a. Uh, working and there it is in the uh, uh, reservoir part of our device. And it is it's right next to uh, the IV bag that we're using as our reservoir. Yeah. And this reservoir, it contains um, it contains not only water, but also the nutrient solution that we're using for the plants. So it should uh, our water system should take care of nutrients as well. And uh, I think that's it for our project. Do you guys have any questions? Excellent job. Excellent team. Job. Oh. Excellent job, team. Uh, 
So let, let's open up the floor for any kind of questions or comments. I like the uh, wicking idea. Do you think there'd be any problem with uh, the lack of gravity up in space to do that wicking? Well, um, as far as we know, wicking um, works based on the surface tension within the material. So it actually opposes gravity and it doesn't use gravity um, to pull the uh, pull the water through. Yeah, you guys have some really remarkable innovations in this project. I'm, I'm really impressed with some of the solutions that you've thought of. Um, you know, both the, the toggling of the wicking and then you said that the, the growth chamber itself was sealable or unsealable based on a solenoid. Can you describe that process a little bit? That's really interesting to me. Yeah, we'll pull up the, uh, the design. So uh, we'll, we need to stop sharing for that. We did. We did. Okay. Yeah, first off, if you would. Here on. Uh, oh, here I am on this. Oh. <laughs> I hope it'll show with uh, the green screen. You might want to turn off your background. Yeah. I don't know. Is that possible? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But on the side of the growth chamber, we have two solenoid valves that are both using like small tubes to attach to. Well, one of them is attaching to the fan, which is going to cause air to actually move through. And then the other one is attached to that uh, desiccant silica gel like container to wow. dehydrate it. And that's the way we're like making it so that the growth chamber can be sealed when we want it to and then switched and unsealed. So the solenoid opens a path. To, to these yeah. tubes. Okay, that's really cool. And so then if you were getting, um, you know, too much water or condensation, like what would trigger that that switching, I guess? The switching would be um, um, most likely related to the uh, humidity inside okay. of the, uh, the It also could be hooked up to just all the, all the sensor data um, could control that because it not only affects the um, the humidity in the chamber, but also the gas levels, and it can be used to collect uh, different kinds of readings. It could switch, like, I guess whenever the researcher wanted it to. So, like, if it got too much humidity or if CO2 levels got too low, then it could switch on and cycle air through. So you could have a code that would say, you know, if you get to these conditions, turn it on, or somebody could manually do it, maybe. Okay, really very cool. Thank you. Excellent. Any other questions or comments? Hey, you guys, uh, my questions have been answered, but uh, congratulations on a great job there. The, the, you know, some of your solutions are really, really interesting and uh, um, excellent. So good work. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I just, I just want to pile on breaking the, uh, the water connectivity with the solenoid was uh, really creative. And could, I want to commend you on that. That was really cool. All right, thank you. Thanks a lot, guys.